wonderful good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you back here at the public forum at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Fair. We are here in the year of 2016 at Hanover Fairground. My name is Mona, I'll be your moderator for the next 20 minutes and we'll discuss the fuel cell technology for grid support, on-site power, storage and hydrogen infrastructure. And for that we'll hear the representative uh, for the Vice President of Business and Commercial Development of Fuel Cell Energy Solutions. Please welcome with me on stage Mr. Andreas Frömmel. Big hands please. So, um, for those of you who don't know, could you please give us a brief uh, introduction of Fuel Cell Energy and giving us a little company history? Sure, I can, yes. <laughs> Fuel Cell Energy Solutions is a joint venture between Fraunhofer, IKTS, and Dresden. I, I guess Fraunhofer is well known in Germany, but also international. And uh, Fuel Cell Energy in Danbury, in Connecticut. And Fuse Energy is the world's largest uh, fuel cell company with 600 employees globally. And uh, how long is the company history? So the, the history of the development of the fuel cells reached 20 years ago, but uh, the company itself is, was established in 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, what products does the company offer? As you probably see in the name, <laughs> has something to do with fuel cells. So we have a, a, a huge range of fuel cells coming from the MCFC, molten carbonate fuel cell technology, in a megawatt range down to 200 kilowatt units, SFC combined with storage, and then the use of these technologies for the hydrogen infrastructure. All right, so let's start with the first topic. Um, how do you use fuel cells with on-site power? So we have, we have two opportunities, stationary fuel cells you can use uh, to have uh, on-site near, um, near the demand, uh, on-site power for the customer or for the utility providing the power for the utility and the utility could sell that to the customer. So we have, we have both sides and usually we uh, use this kind of fuel cells for a CHP solution, uh, so we would provide uh, beside the clean power, also heat or cool, cold cool for the cooling purposes. And uh, the, the benefit or the advantage of, of the heat coming out of the MCFC technology fuel cell is uh, the high temperature. We have between 370 to 400 degrees C, so we could provide steam for the industry, for drying processes or for uh, industrial steam. Uh, and um, this is, helps, helps, of course, uh, in the industrial field, but we could also use that for cooling uh, in, in large buildings, in hotels, in, in hospitals, for uh, their purposes. And what type of fuel cell technology are you using for that in particular? For this CHP, uh, in, in a large range, we are using the MCFC technology, so molten carbonate fuel cell. Um, and we, we could use for that directly natural gas or biogas, which is of course another benefit because we could use the current infrastructure. No need to uh, convert that into hydrogen. We have an internal reformation, so we could use directly biogas, for instance, from wastewater treatment or from, from the food industry or other sources. Could you briefly, for those in the audience, um, and, uh, explain what is the difference between the MCFC and the solid oxide fuel cell? I guess the, the, the most important benefit, as I already told you, is the internal reformation, but the most benefit is that we have the possibility with this technology to go in large sizes. So the, the largest installation f uh, with our fuel cells is 60 megawatt, it's in South Korea. And normally, project size right now is between, I would say globally, between 5 and 15 megawatt. We're now establishing the first megawatt unit in Europe, so it's already installed. We will go into operation in June, July this year. It's in Mannheim for an industrial customer. Um, so the, the, the possibility to reach with such a technology 
the, the impact in the megawatt class, that's the benefit for the MCFC, but also vice versa, the, the cost per kilowatt hour or the cost per installed kilowatt. It's different to SFC, and, and uh, SFC, as you probably know, is ceramic. So with, with the MCFC, you have nickel and steel, which is rather cheap, opposite to high-tech ceramic, and ceramic has his limits relative to the size of the cells. The MCFC um, cells are as large as twice or maybe three times this table surface and four meters high. These are our stacks, so really uh, power plants. So you mentioned already that you have installation in Mannheim, which means that you are not only doing laboratory, you are actually, this is a product, you're already on the market. Yeah, that's um, right. So uh, what is the benefit of your product then? in, in the CHP? I like your question about it's the product or, or <laughs> not, not any more laboratory. So we, we have 100 uh, power plants globally running. Until now we produced 4.7 with this power plants, 4.7 terawatt hours clean electricity. Um, and in, in, in Europe we have till now this megawatt class in, in um, Mannheim and then we have smaller units in London, in Berlin, in Zurich. So in total, we are with two megawatts opposite to globally 300. So you see uh, uh, Europe is a little bit behind. Uh, the benefit is, of course, that you have a clean power production um, with almost no uh, harmful emissions like NOx or SOx. So uh, acid rain and cancer. The reasons for that are these um, pollutions and also not fine stuff, means uh, particles. So you could place these units directly into the city. And we, we are producing globally as a company 70 megawatt per year in addition to the current operated uh, power plants. So this is fascinating. Not only that uh, we can do something uh not harmful for the environment, we can do something good for the environment, but also making money at the same time. Yes. Is this, um, is this customization or how, how does it work? I like to say that because it's, it's an, an active environmental protecting action, which not only costs money, it's opposite. You could save, with, by that based on the high efficiency, you, you could save cost. Uh, cost for electricity, for heat or cold. Um, so, the, an environmental activity which is affordable and which leads you to, uh, for instance, in Germany, to 10 cent per kilowatt hour power cost. Uh, could you please repeat the question? <laughs> the, uh, the question is uh, if I'm a customer, yeah. uh, is, is, the, is this a, how, when I approach you, know, one, I want to. Ah, yeah, the customizing was the question. Mm -hmm. Sorry, thank you. Um, so normally we, we start to, to investigate together with the customer what's the environment, so uh, what are the needs for power, for heat, for cold, then we would size the unit, then we would talk about the right level of integrate, interconnection to a local grid probably. Uh, we are talking about is there a need for power security, for instance with data center uh, we, we are right now talking about having the fuses as a primary source for the power and the grid as a backup, which is a new thinking. So we, we, we are using the, the fuses, they have an uh, um, availability of 98%, the, the module itself, which is rather high. So we are using that as a primary power and the grid as a backup. This, this is, for instance, a discussion we would have with the customer. Or we would talk about, is, is there a need for, a, for an island mode? So we are able to switch off from the grid and have an electricity island for the customer if there's an, an, an outage in the grid. Okay, I would like to proceed to the next topic. And uh, this leads me to the question, and I will refer back to the title. We will talk about fuel cell technology for grid support, on-site power storage, and hydrogen infrastructure. So what I would like to know is, um, why should we use fuel cells as storage if there are existing batteries? We have an energy landscape, and, and we all want to have a cleaner environment. 
So we could either use the, the, the fuel cells to produce power from, for instance, uh, natural gas or, or biogas. With that, we would reach up to 60% um, electrical efficiency. But we want also to leave the fossil fuels and uh, move towards green energy. And green energy means solar and wind. And you all know the fluctuating renewables and, and the issues coming with that, talking about the transmission lines, the new one we want to establish. But there's, there could be a different approach and there should be a different because we don't want to have, for instance, in Germany, additional 4,000 new kilometers new transmission lines. It doesn't make sense. So how is about thinking if we could combine locally the uh, product, renewable production and the consumption as well? We have a delay between production and uh, consumption even, or for instance, if you talk today about the weather, sunny in the morning, now it's cloudy, then we have the night. So, exactly, we have sun so the daytime, yes. and nighttime no sun, no energy. Imagine you want to store for such a, a building the energy in batteries. So it's a question of capacity and duration. And so you would reach the limits also costly-wise, the, 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 the limits for the batteries, and it's better to store that in hydrogen because it's cheaper to produce with the reversible SFC, for instance, or electrolysis out of this uh, renewable energy locally, the, the hydrogen, store that and use it backwards during the night because it's uh, cheaper to, to store the kilowatt hours if you want to have that over a day or even a week. Uh, available to use it uh, uh, later on in a uh, fuel cell mode. So the fuel cell is a kind of bridge between the sectors. We, we could bridge, we could leverage, even leverage the renewables, so we could um, reach a much higher share of renewables without the fuel cell. Even since we want to store the, the renewable energy uh, locally in hydrogen. And then we could, of course, also use these hydrogen to fuel the cars. So overall, there's a, a whole package of benefits that this solution yes. will provide instead of using batteries. Um, I don't like this approach to have black and white. The reality is gray. So we have a mixture, always a mixture. And of course, we need batteries. For instance, exactly in this car, I guess the best solution is to have a battery providing, I would say, peak load power for the for the for the immediate um, uh, action in the car or also in the, in, the, in the building for the for the peaks and then you have in the back a fuel cell with a constant recharging of this battery so we just to have an example so for for these different technologies the the future will be a mixture of all these technologies and coming back to your question with the customizing you have to look um, um, not only on a single um, issue or single application. So if you would talk about an industrial customer, uh, you should look over the fence to the neighborhood. Maybe there's a school or maybe there's a, a public uh, swimming pool. And then you could combine that. And for that, you would find the right solution. So what is needed to build up a hydrogen future in Germany? First of all, I guess we need the right regulation. We need the strategic thinking of the policy, understanding uh, what's, what's the strategy, the right strategy, and not like today, kind of sandbox game, trying th something there and something there, and then looking what's happened and then being surprised about the results. Uh, understanding of the technology, bringing the experts together and, and, and develop the the right approach towards the energy society, but we should we should be aware of that we are now in a transition uh, towards we are already in a transition towards the energy society, which means it's it's always here. It's not a question if there will be fuel cells. It's only the question who will supply that. Will we buy that from Asia or America or will we buy that from local companies, from German or European uh, companies. So regulation is needed and um, the, the understanding of the people and the, and the uh, changed behavior 
uh, about the impact of power production energy landscape for the environment. Just to, to think about, uh, is it wise to, to, to buy a polluting um, alternative power production technology to have a payback of four years instead of doing something for environment and have a payback of eight or nine years? Uh, I guess the next generation will ask us about that. So this is uh, an investment in our future and our all future. Sure. And um, that leads me to one of my last questions because we are almost running out of time. Yeah. Um, so why, why in, in particular who uh, should engage with fuel cell energy solutions? We have, we, we have uh, several interesting segments which could use um, Let's talk about the stationary fuels with the MCFC, which could use, could use this technology. I guess the, the most interesting part is industry, food industry with the biogas, um, industry which needs high temperature heat, but also large buildings, um, local grids, and that coming over to this utilities. So uh, utilities are not our enemies, utilities are our partners because they are also in a transition from, de from centralized power production to decentralized power production. And they need tools for that. And the stationary fuel cells, they could provide uh, less emissions, high efficiency. So we could s spare 25% of primary energy. Probably you know that uh, Europe buys every day gas or primary energy imports that in, in an amount of 1 billion euro. So if you would save 25% of that, it's a lot of money, we could do better things with that. Um, so we have that. Um, and, and to reaching these uh, energy goals we have as a society, uh, the, the utilities could play, uh, I would say, a, a crucial part in that moving forward, change the business model, and then we are used to, to work with them together, um, uh, not only in, in Germany, we are doing here that with E.ON, um, uh, approaching together with them uh, via contracting models, the, the end customer, uh, but also globally. So f in the US, there are several utilities providing even uh, project budgets for us. So, they, as you probably know, we, we, we got uh, around about 40 million uh, dollars to do projects. So, they understood that this is the right tool to move forward with the energy landscape. So, this is not only the right time, there's also the, the right people involved. And I'm pretty sure there are many questions at this time. Unfortunately, we are, we are at the end of our talk already. But all the questions can be taken to your booth. You would like to explain where the booth is located? Yes, we, we have two booths. One is in this direction, Energy Saxony. It's so B40. You, right, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you will find a, a collection of, of the, the, the best companies from Saxony dealing with all these energy um, subjects. And then over there, in this direction, uh, the decentralized power production. And, and there you could see a model of the largest stack of the world with providing 400 kilowatt. And this is J38. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for this interesting topic. Thank and once again, it. big hands, please. Thank you. Our next topic will be in only two minutes' time, and for that we will uh, discuss the uh, Solid Power's commercial strategy for SOFC products. And for that we'll hear the CEO of Solid Power, which is Mr. Guido Gummert. So please stay in tune also for our online guests. We are live streaming from the fair. And also for you, have another co coffee, and our topic will start in only one minute time. Thank you. <laughs>